Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and we're glad you're with us tonight. We're ready for a study from God's Word. Hope that you are settled in, have your pen and paper, maybe your Bible. Uh, I say it's the biggest Bible class around. You just pick up the phone. Instead of raising your hand, you pick up the phone and call in. We have a question and answer uh, for you. When the phones light up, our phone lines are up, you can uh, call in. We'll be glad to hear from you tonight. I always want to start off with our content information. A word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276 340 2653 is how you can reach me. And if you're in the uh, Eden area, we'll be at 250 the Boulevard uh, there in Eden. And we hope that you'll come out and visit us tonight. We had a good study tonight. Had folks from the community come out and uh, uh, had a good study together. And we're glad that you uh, are watching and that you are interested in studying God's Word. You know, oftentimes, uh, uh, I've learned to pray a little differently. Instead of praying that we come in contact with somebody who needs the gospel, pray that we come in contact with individuals who want the gospel because everybody needs the gospel, but a lot of individuals don't want it. And so uh, we want to find the individuals that are wanting and needing the gospel. And so we hope that you are, if you're one of those individuals, hope that you will seek us out and uh, let us know how we can assist you in studying, the, uh, studying God's word and, and reading obedience to that. Uh, Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue, 120 American Legion in Danville. Uh, brethren, we'll always be glad to study the Bible with you, and we hope that you will uh, come out and uh, let yourself be known. As a matter of fact, uh, I always say that if you are uh, unfamiliar with the Church of Christ, if you will visit, you probably will find that you know someone there tonight. Uh, a gentleman came and visited with us, and uh, uh, sure enough, uh, walked in, and he knew one of the a uh, lady sitting right there, and uh, so you never know who uh, who's a member of the Lord's church. You know, you might re not realize they're a member of the Lord's church. You haven't seen them in a while, and then there you see them. The next time you see them, they're uh, uh, actually studying the Bible with you. So come out and visit with us. We'll be glad to see you. Hope that you will, hope we'll do that and uh, study God's Word with us. I want to start off with this verse tonight, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. Paul said, And these things, brethren, have I in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. One of the problems, if not, and maybe even the greatest problem that uh, is in the religious world today is people thinking about men are going beyond what is written. Thinking that they themselves are above what is written. You know, there's a saying that people think that they are above the law. And oftentimes we think about those individuals being politicians, uh, uh, you know, people of uh, great wealth and uh, prominence, and they get away with all kinds of things because they are above the law or they make the law. Oftentimes you might think about uh, uh, politicians who, you know, drive drunk or drive off the uh, bridge and kill somebody and, and you know, and they get away scot-free and the next thing you know they get to run for Senate and no one ever... Uh, bats an eye because, well, you know, they're from a wealthy family. They're from well-to-do. They're a lot of money. They have a lot of pool, a lot of, a lot of clout. And so no one really makes a big fuss about that because uh, that's who they are. Well, basically, individuals like that uh, envision themselves above the law, that they can get away with things because uh, of who they are. But, friends, that is why the religious world in such a problem is today is because people go beyond or rise above, or think that they are above the law. But that's, that's what Paul's condemning, the idea of thinking that someone or something <clears throat> is above the law. And when you go above or beyond that which is written, really you're going beyond what God said or commanded. Now, I believe if you talk to someone and you ask them, well, do you believe the Bible? Oh, yes, I believe the Bible. But when you start talking to them and you find out what they practice or what they believe, you'll find, you know what, that's really kind of contrary to what the Bible says. You really are going beyond what it says. You're running past it. And that's exactly what sin is. In 1 John 3, verse 4, and I'll put this up here, 1 John 3, and verse 4, uh, John says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now, friends, this is what we're talking about. Individuals who go beyond. Now, it's not the exact same word, but the, but the idea is the same. A transgression, <clears throat> a 
trans, to transgress the law is to go beyond. It means to miss the mark. And it's just like someone shooting a bow and arrow or shooting a gun and they, they miss the target. They go past it. And that's the way it is when people are above the law. They think of someone above that which is written. They have more uh, uh, what appreciation or more love for the individual or the, the teaching that is contrary to the Bible than the Bible itself. And so that's what we're talking about, going beyond the law, going above the law, thinking you're, that you're above the law. But friends, no one is above the law. No one is above the law. But the reason why men think they are above the law is because they turn around and they make rules, they make commandments, they make teachings and doctrines that go beyond God's law. They take what God has said and they make, a, they make another rule. You know, they make a, uh, a statement or a, a teaching, a doctrine, and it violates or goes against what God said. I want you to notice in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter uh, 15. <clears throat> and uh, let's, just, let's just start in verse 1 here. Matthew 15 and verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy uh, disciples transgress the tradition of the fathers, of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Their tradition was above the law. Their tradition was beyond what God said. They were actually making rules and laws that were contrary to God's laws and violating God's laws by the very nature of their existence. It says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die of the death. So here's what God said, but you went beyond that, he says. You're going beyond the law. You're thinking above that which is written. Because ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest uh, be profited by me, and honor not his father's mother, he shall be free. Thus ye have made the uh, commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So Jesus is condemning them because they made these laws, or these rules, that have gone beyond. You know, they've actually set at naught, is what Jesus says. You've set at naught the commandments of God. You've, you've made them of none effect. Because you went past them. You went beyond them. You went above them. He says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. For, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, friends, this is exactly what you have today. Men come along and they make rules. They don't like what God says, or they, they say they do, but they don't really because they make laws or they make rules uh, teachings, doctrines that are contrary to what God says, and they elevate that instead. Instead of going with what the Bible says, and instead of going with what the, the Word of God says, they come up with something and thus their doctrine is above the law. It is more powerful or more popular than, than God's Word. And so, here is the conclusion. If a man makes a doctrine or a teaching that is above the law, that's contrary to what God says, going beyond it, going past it, then it must be that the man thinks that he is above the law. After all, he's teaching something that's not God's law. Now, Peter said, uh, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. But in this occasion, when men come along with their own doctrines, they're actually speaking as the oracles of men. They must be a greater God than God himself. They must have a greater bit of knowledge than God himself. They must have a greater word of wisdom than God himself. They must have a more perfect revelation than what God has given us. So they're going beyond what's written by making their own laws. They're rising above because they think they are above the law. Now here's a, here's a good example of this. I want you to, to listen to a conversation that I had with a Baptist preacher in Eden just yesterday. And I think it's Benny Wood, Tri-City Baptist. And uh, I went, went to find him. And this is the conversation we have. We're going to listen to it. And then we're going to go back and, and visit it. And let's just see if this is a classic example of someone thinking they're above the law about what they say and what they do. All right? Waiting for Benny Wood to come to the door. Hey, how you doing? 
How you doing? Benny. How you doing, Benny? Good to see you. Yeah, James Oldfield. James Oldfield. That's right. James yeah. See you, man. Yeah, how you doing? I'm all right. Hey, listen, we out, we out doing a little door knocking, uh -huh. and uh, I thought I'd we'll come out here and see you. Well, uh, one of our members, neighbors, uh, said you out visiting them, and he asked about uh, maybe you could find, I think he said the, maybe the, the sinner's prayer in the Bible, and and he said you wouldn't give my answer, and I, I just didn't know if you could maybe didn't have the time to do that then, or could you sit down and have a Bible study with us? We're trying to find... No, sir, I can't have a Bible study with you. You can't? No, sir. You won't ever? I'm not here to argue about the Bible, okay? Well, I said study. I never said. I know what you said. I never said anything about not being able to find the sinner's prayer. But you can't. I didn't say I could. So you can or you can't? Well, I don't know about that. I don't think it's exactly in there, but it says... But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's a but that's that, a person who's unsaved and knows they're unsaved. Okay. And knows they're going to die in the hell and they want to be saved, and so therefore they cry out to the Lord. It don't. Okay. It's not written as I know of exactly. Okay. So, but but calling on the name of the Lord is that is that praying? Because the Bible also says mm -hmm. that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. Uh huh. You know. So how is it that if God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, how is it He going to hear a sinner pray and ask for forgiveness? You sure are confused, aren't you? No, I'm not confused. You are. No? I thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming. Okay. So you, you so you can't find it or you won't find it? Send us prayer. I'm not going to answer you, okay? Thank uh, you, okay. coming. All right. I'm sorry? Just remember to try not to come back and disturb the whole household, okay? I don't care to talk to you about... I'm not going to argue the Bible with you. I'm not going to discuss the Bible with you because you don't want to learn. You just, you just want to do what you want to do. No. No, you so you know my heart now. You're judging my heart. But you, well, what I'm you do is you come up here trying to pick something. You just come pick it. You, you don't care about what the truth is. All I'm all I know, I Benny, is like you're teaching something that's not in the Bible. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. Well, we'll be talking about it Thursday night on TV. Okay. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> kind of interesting conversation. Not very really long, a couple minutes. But the fact that I'm asking a question about a doctrine that Benny Woods would teach, Benny Wood would teach, and it's not in the Bible, so it has to be in of itself above the law. And here's a man who is asked, can you show me in the Bible where this law, this doctrine, which is above the law, is? And of course he can't find it, but the fact that he doesn't want to even attempt to it tells me that he thinks he's above the law. Now, let's listen again to what he says. He said... Uh, when I ask him, and I'm going to, let's see if we can't just play this again. Benny, how you doing, Benny? Right, man. Good to see you. Yeah, James Oldfield. James who? Oldfield. That's right. Good yeah. to see you, man. Yeah, how you doing? I'm all right. Hey, listen, we out, we out doing a little door knocking, uh -huh. and uh, I thought I'd come out here and see you. Well, one of our members, neighbors, uh, said you're out visiting them, and he asked about... Uh, Maybe you could find, I think he said the, maybe the, the sinner's prayer in the Bible, and and he said you wouldn't give my answer, and I, I just didn't know if you could, maybe didn't have the time to do that then, or could you sit down and have a Bible study with us? We're trying to find... No, sir, I can't have a Bible study with you. All right, no, I can't have a Bible study with you. Now, think about that, friends. Here's a man that I say thinks he's above the law. He thinks he's above the law of God. He professes to be a... Bible preacher, a so-called pastor, but yet he is violating the very principle that our Lord and Savior said. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel. Look, in Mark 16, 15 and 16, here's what Jesus said. Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's just stop right there because I know Mr. Benny Wood, he is not going to want to hear verse 16, so let's just stop verse 15. He doesn't even want to do 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, he must think he's above the law because he's not even wanting to do that. Here's someone coming knocking on the door and says, let's have a Bible study. No, I'm not. I can't have a Bible study with you. So he is not wanting to do what Jesus said in Matthew 28 and verse 19. What did our Lord say? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all the way even to the end of the world. Amen. So, no, I can't have a Bible study with you. I'm not going to study the Bible with you. Why? 
Is it the case that Mr. Benny Wood thinks he's above the law? I say it is. He thinks that he is above doing what God says. That's what someone does. When they go beyond what is written, when they go beyond what is, what is written in the sacred page, then they're saying, that doesn't apply to me. Now, isn't that what people, what we'd say about people in anything else? Oh, that doesn't apply to me. Nah, that's not for me. You know, I'm not going to do that. No, I can't have a Bible study with you. Um, you know, last week, Mark and I were talking about how the, uh, 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 the Jehovah's Witness, you know, here we went and found someone, we found uh, uh, a member of the Jehovah's Witness Church and said, how about we have a Bible study? No, can't do that, can't do that. Been out looking for Bible studies all day, can't have a Bible study. Here's someone coming, asking for a Bible study, can't do that. Why? You must think you're above the law. You're above the, the Great Commission. The Great Commission is not for Benny Wood, okay? Go ye does not mean Benny, all right? Go ye does not mean go Benny, all right? He's, just not, he's, not, he's not having any of it, all right? So then he goes on. Let's get back to our <clears throat> video. Listen to what he says. You can't? No, sir. You won't ever? I'm not here to argue about the Bible, okay? Well, I said study. I never said. I know what you said. I never said anything about not being able to find the sinner's prayer. But you can't. I didn't say I could. So you can or you can't? Well, I don't know about that. I don't think it's exactly... All right. Now, here's our, here's our next point, all right? Here's our next point. So, can you find the sinner's prayer in the Bible? Well, I never said I couldn't find it. So you can find it. I didn't say I could. So can you or can you not find it? Well, I don't know if I can or if I can't. Now, friends, I don't know about you, but that, I, that sounds like uh, who's on first, right? I mean... I, I never said I couldn't, but I didn't say I can't. But I don't know if I can or I can't. Well, man, that's almost a, a tongue twister, you know. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. I didn't say I couldn't, but I didn't say I can. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, will, won't, can't. I don't know. He can, but he can't, but he doesn't know if he could. Didn't say I couldn't. This is confusing, and it's because... He doesn't think he's obligated to give you an answer. He doesn't think he's obligated to tell you, to teach you, so why does he even care about finding the answer? But here's the thing, friends. We can know the truth. We can know uh, uh, what is God's will for us. In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4, notice this. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now, friends, if there were such a thing as the sinner's prayer, you could find it. You could find it in the scripture. It would be, it would be so easy to find it if it's there. Well, I didn't say I couldn't find it, but I didn't say I could. Don't know if I can, don't know if I can. I mean, finding the sinner's prayer, it ought to be easier than finding Bigfoot. You just think about that. You see all these shows on TV, hunting Bigfoot, and that's all they ever do is hunt. They never find him. You know, oh, it sounds like Bigfoot. I think that sounds like a Bigfoot. How do you know what a Bigfoot sounds like? You've never even seen one. How do you know that sound that you're hearing is coming from a, a Sasquatch? We never find him. But it's not that hard to find a Bible doctrine if it's in the Bible. On second thought, it might be easier to find Bigfoot than find the sinner's prayer because no one has produced it. But at least they've produced some sounds and they've produced some, some hair or some feet print that they say is Bigfoot. Well, you can't even find that about the sinner's prayer. So if it's in there, why can't it be found? Why is it so uh, obscure? Why is it so, you know, uh, 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 ambiguous, you might say? In Luke 1, verses 1 through 4, Listen to what Luke writes to uh, Theopolis. Luke 1, beginning in verse 1, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Now, listen, the Baptist surely believe in the sinner's prayer because every track you pick up has the sinner's prayer on it. 
has something that says, say the sinner's prayer. So they must surely believe it. Well, they've taken in hand to set forth some things that they surely believe, but they don't seem to be very certain about it. But Luke says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good unto me, also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theopolis, that thou mightest know of certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Now, friends, if Luke knew about the sinner's prayer, he would have written it down. He would have put it down in order. He would have written it down exactly as it should have been, clarified it, cleared it up, so that Theopolis and all of the rest of us could understand it. He had perfect knowledge, perfect understanding of all things from the beginning of time. But yet, you know what? He didn't write it down. He didn't write it down. The things that are most surely believed uh, by the Baptist, you can't find them in the Bible. You know why? They weren't written down. They weren't written down by inspired men like Luke. All right? They weren't delivered. They weren't delivered uh, to us from the beginning. They weren't uh, 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 witnessed to by eyewitnesses like Luke or other inspired men. They weren't seen. They weren't talked about by ministers of the word. Why can't you find it? Because it's not in the Bible, friends. So it really is kind of becoming clear why Mr. Wood would say, well, I didn't say I couldn't, but I didn't say I can. Can't say I won't, but maybe I will. Well, which is it? Why so ambiguous? Why so, uh, so vague? You know? If you don't know if it's in the Bible, study. You know, friends, there's nothing wrong with saying I don't know where it is in the Bible. Let's sit down and find it. Maybe we can find it together. You know, sometimes you need somebody to help you. Sometimes you need somebody to help you uh, 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 find the answer. Notice this, in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, verse 36. Excuse me, let's back up a little bit. Acts chapter 8 and verse <coughs> uh, 30. Philip coming down and meeting the, the Ethiopian in the chariot, Philip ran thither and uh, to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired, Philip, that he would come up and sit with him. Now, if you don't understand where the sinner's prayer is in the Bible, why don't you ask me to come sit down in the chariot with you? Let's, let's find it together. Let's see if it's really there. But really, I, I'll say, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the Ethiopian in this case. And I'm coming, and I'm running to, to Benny Wood. I'm saying, hey, I don't understand what I'm reading. I don't understand this about the sinner's prayer. I read it in the track, but I don't read it in the Bible. I don't understand why you're teaching it. I'm desiring that you would come and sit in my chariot. I'm desiring you to come and sit down with me across the table, and let's study, and let's find out if the sinner's prayer is written in the Bible. And he's like, nope, can't study with you, won't study with you. Didn't say I can't, can't say I will, won't say I can. Well, maybe you think you're just too good for it. Maybe you're above the law. See? You, what you need to realize, friends, if you can't find what you believe in the Bible, you may need to start saying, you know what, maybe I believe one of these cunningly devised fables. Maybe I need to believe something, or maybe I have believed something that is really, you know, uh, hoodwinking me. Listen to what Peter says. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Friends, if someone's telling you say a sinner's prayer, and they really can't show it to you in the Bible, they won't show it to you in the Bible, or they say, well, I might can, maybe I can, maybe I can't. You know what? You may be following one of those cunningly devised fables. And that's exactly what the sinner's prayer is, cunningly devised. Because it's got a whole lot of people fooled. It's got a whole lot of people hoodwinked. Because people are touting it, spouting it left and right. And it's not even in the Bible. It's not even in the Bible. Even the bad preacher won't show it, can't show it. Well, he didn't say he couldn't, but he didn't say he could. Can't say will and will say won't. Well, I don't know. 
Who's on first? See? If, if it's so confusing to give an answer, a Bible answer to something you believe, maybe you should stop and either study it out again, uh, revisit it, you know, read again the scriptures that are supposed to be teaching this. You might find out, you know what, I, I've been believing a lie all this time. All right. So, never said I couldn't, couldn't say I will. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Let's move on. Mr. Woods then says, but it says, but whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. All right. He says, I don't think it's in there exactly. I don't think it's in there exactly. So you can or you can't. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think it's exactly in there, but it says. I don't think it's exactly in there. I don't think it's exactly in there. Friends, have you ever stopped to think, if you're teaching a doctrine or if you believe something, that's not exactly in the Bible? What exactly are you believing then? It's not exactly in the Bible. Well, I believe, I believe the Bible and I believe something that's... It's not exactly like the Bible, but it's a reasonable facsimile thereof. You know? Eh, hey, you know, I, I don't know. Not really the Bible. It's not really in there. I don't think it's in there exactly, but hey... You know, it's kind of like one of those pictures on the box of the Fruit Loops, you know. You know, you look at it just right, and if you turn it, just well, I kind of might make something out of that. Is that what we're talking about in the Sunday's Prayer? It's not in there exactly, but we're just going to kind of twist it just a little bit, and it might sound good, might fit. Is that what we're talking about? It's not in there exactly. Is that how you work a jigsaw puzzle? Well, it doesn't fit exactly, but if you pound on it hard enough, it'll go in there. Yeah, that's not exactly right. Friends, that sounds to me like one of those twisted fables. That sounds to me like one of those, one of those uh, uh, cunningly devised fables. Paul said in Ephesians 4 and verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slide of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Is that what we're talking about? Are you, are you twisting it? Are you resting the uh, scriptures that, uh, that in, order to, in order to get um, uh, this doctrine over here? Uh, 2 Peter 3.15 And on the account, the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures, unto their own destruction. That sounds to me like the sinner's prayer. I don't think it's in there exactly in there. It's not exactly in there, but you know, if you hold your mouth just right, and you skip over a few verses, and you don't read some of the other verses and you ignore some of the other verses, ah, hey, it fits. Hey, it fits. Well, friends, I, I don't want that, I don't want my salvation to be based upon something that, well, that's not in there exactly. But you know what you can do? You can find exactly what someone did to be saved in the Bible, and it's never the sinner's prayer. You think about that. Why is it that people run, they say, well, the sinner's prayer is Romans 10, verse 13. Romans 10, verse 13. Well, why don't you show me the sinner's prayer in the book of Acts? Why don't you show me the sinner's prayer in the book of Acts? Well, it's not in there. You know why? Because in the book of Acts, everybody that was, that was obedient to the gospel was baptized for the remission of sins. Acts 22, 16. Why tarest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. There's no sinner's prayer. Not in the book of Acts. Not in the book that tells about all the conversions. It's not in there. But you go to letters that were written to people who are already converted, like Romans was written to people who are already converted. The church at Rome. All right? And, oh, well, there's the sinner's prayer right there. Why would he be telling them the sinner's prayer? 
They were already saved. If you find out where the Romans were saved, you never find the sinner's prayer. You go right to Acts chapter 2. There were strangers of Rome in the book of Acts who were saved by rendering obedience to the gospel. When Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's how they would say, right, Friends, I can tell you exactly. If you were to ask me, Well, can you show me what you believe? Can you show me in the Bible? You believe baptism for the remission of sins? Show me that in the Bible. Oh, friends, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Mark 15, Mark 16, uh, Mark 16, 15 to 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Acts 2, verse 38. Repent and be baptized to every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Acts 22, 16. Why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Now, that's pretty clear. And that's pretty exact. It's a whole lot more exact than, than uh, the sinner's prayer. You're on the word from the Lord. How you doing, James? This is Russell. I say you remember me. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask you something, but don't get mad at me because you know I don't know, understand a whole lot. Don't get mad at you. We use if we use certain parts of the Old Testament, could we use all of the Old Testament, sir? Well, why would you use parts of the Old Testament? Well, I just hear some a lot of people preach on the Old Testament. And I was just wondering if since they preach some on the Old Testament, could they preach all on the Old Testament? Well, now preaching from the Old Testament <clears throat> is not the same as getting your authority from the Old Testament. All right, let's, let's be clear on that, all right? If you're saying, well, let's go to the Old Testament for some learning some examples. I mean, Romans 15 and verse 4 says the things that are written time are written for our learning. So those things in the Old Testament are good examples for us. First. Corinthians 10 and verse 6 uh, through about verse, I don't know, 9, 10, 11. All examples. All right, these things are for examples for us. So we can learn from them. But if you're talking about getting authority from the Old Testament, as in the reason why I do this is because the Old Testament says it, now we're going to have trouble because Galatians 5 and verse 4 says, Christ has become of none effect, Unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. So I don't want to get my authority anything from the Old Testament. I may go to the Old Testament to show an example of obedience or faithfulness or what God does to individuals who are disobedient, but I, I'm not going to get my authority for why I do it. I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to sing and I'm going to play an instrument of music because... David did. Well, that's getting authority from the Old Testament. And Paul said, Christ becomes of none effect from you if you, uh, uh, to you if you are justified by the law. Does that, does that help you? Yes, sir. Okay. I ask you one more question, please, sir? Sure. Um, Jesus died on the cross for the uh, Old Testament. So we are now living the New Testament, right? Something like that? Right. Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, he, he, uh, he sealed the Old Testament. All right. He finished it. And his blood, his blood cleansed all those that were under the Old Testament, faithful under the Old Testament. And uh, he brought in the New Testament. Let's look at Hebrews 9, verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So he finished the Old Testament. He fulfilled it. All right? The Old Testament. And then he brought in the New Testament. That's what we're living under. That's the authority today is the New Testament. Okay? Okay. Thank you, sir, and all, I appreciate it. All right. You have a blessed day. You too. <clears throat> all right. All right. That was a good call. Good call. All right. So, Mr. Benny Wood, he can't find exactly what he believes. Friends, I can show you exactly what I believe. Now, he goes on to say this. He says, but it does say. Did you hear him? He said, but it does say. 
It does say, and then he quotes Romans 10 and verse 13. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's, that's, that's pretty close. That's not exactly to this prayer, but that's pretty close. Well, friends, if you know what this means, that's not even the 42nd cousin to the sinner's prayer. See, that's not even close. You say, well, but it says something that sounds like it. Well, just because it sounds like it, that doesn't mean that's what it is. See? Notice in Acts 2, verse 21, <clears throat> Acts 2, verse 21, On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this is what people need to do to be saved. Now, when they were convicted and pricked in their hearts, when they were convicted and pricked in their hearts uh, at the preaching of Peter and the other eleven, notice they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We know we're supposed to call on the name of the Lord. How do you call on the name of the Lord? Because they know if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. Verse 21. But now they're asking what to do. Well, if they understood that calling on the name of the Lord was a prayer, why didn't they just say, Oh, men and brethren, let us say a sinner's prayer and so that we can be saved. But they didn't understand calling on the name of the Lord was praying. Otherwise, they would have done it. And Peter and the other uh, 11, they didn't understand the calling on the name of the Lord to be a sinner's prayer because notice this, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. What shall we do for the remission of sins? Well, you need to repent and be baptized. And the people said back to him, you told us to say a prayer a while ago. Call on the name of the Lord. No. They didn't know what call on the name of the Lord in, entailed or required of them. So they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized. Did he just forget they were supposed to say a little prayer? Did he just forget they're supposed to uh, believe in the heart that the Lord Jesus raised from the dead and thou shall be saved? Did he forget that they're supposed to just say this little prayer? Did he pass them out a little pamphlet? No. Because calling on the name of the Lord is not saying a prayer. See that? That's so easy. They said, what must we do? Well, it wasn't say a prayer. So just because Benny Wood says, well, it, it says, maybe it says, well, friend, that's because he's above the law. He's not really concerned about what the Bible says because he's up here living above the law, teaching something that's not in the Bible. So why would he be concerned about it? And then I ask him, then I ask him this. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's, uh, but that's that, a person who's unsaved and knows they're unsaved. Okay. They're going to die in hell and they want to be saved. And so therefore they cry out to the Lord. It don't, okay. It's not written as I know of exactly. Okay. So, but, but calling on the name of the Lord, is that, is that praying? Because the Bible also says mm -hmm. that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. Uh -huh. You know, so how is it that if God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, how is it he going to hear a sinner pray and ask for forgiveness? <laughs> you sure are confused, aren't you? All right. I sure am confused because... I'm listening to one scripture. I'm listening to Benny say, say a prayer. And I'm listening to a scripture that says, we know that God hears not sinners. I'm listening to another scripture that says, in 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord against them that do evil. So I'm listening, I'm listening to scriptures that say God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, that God doesn't, uh, his face is not toward the, 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 the wicked, those that do evil, that his ears are not open to their prayers, that his eyes are not on them. But I'm hearing Benny say, just say a little prayer. Not exactly a prayer, but yeah, it's pretty close. Well, friends, I'm going to take the scripture over the, well, not exactly. And so, no, I'm not confused except by the doctrine. I'm confused why anybody would teach it, and I'm confused why anybody would believe it. See? So why is it then that, that I'm confused when I'm simply showing that your doctrine is violating the Scripture? So if I believed that I had to say a little prayer to be saved, but no one could show me exactly in the Bible 
where it is, yeah, I, I would be confused. But Mr. Benny is the one that's confused because he's up here above the law teaching something that's, that's beyond what is written, contrary to what is written, <clears throat> and, uh, and thus he's confused, but he's not really concerned about it. So, see, friends, I, I'm not really confused at all. Now, uh, you know, Mr. Benny, he went on to say, you know, don't come back. No, I'm not confused. You are. No. I thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming. Oh, okay. So you, so you can't find it or you won't find it? Send us prayer. I'm not going to answer you, okay? Okay, now, I appreciate you coming. Why would he appreciate me coming? He appreciated me coming. Thank you for coming. Good to see me. Welcome, but don't come back, he says. Friends, this is the this is a man who is living above the law. All right. When we walk off, he comes back and says, "Try not to come back and disturb." <sighs> Boy, I'm I'm really gonna try. I'm really gonna try not to disturb Benny Wood anymore. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Okay. So. You know, friends, living above the law, that's what we're talking about. Now, friends, this is what we're talking about. Any doctrine that comes along that's contrary to the will of God is above the law. Any doctrine that says things like this, well, you don't need authority. You don't need authority. That's going above the law. Jesus said all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. But so when someone comes along and says, well, I don't need authority, they're going beyond Jesus. They're going beyond his word. They're saying, well, I'm going to pass Jesus up. Jesus has all authority. I don't need authority. You don't need Jesus then. If you say you don't need authority and Jesus has all authority, then you don't need Jesus. But here's, here's what we're talking about. The Bible says things like this. The Bible authorizes by what it says, not by what it doesn't say. Okay? And... Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, I'm trying to go through this because I want to get through some more of these slides. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, Paul said that if any man think himself to be spiritual, a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So whatever Paul said is what Jesus said. Paul was giving commands from the Lord. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order as a command to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every, man, let every one of you lay by in swords. God has prospered there be no garrison when I come. So the command that Paul gave was from the Lord. Now, Jesus, through Paul, commanded to sing. All right? So there's the command. That's what's authorized. You're on the word from the Lord. Gang, this is Russell again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, I was just wanting to know, if I was raised up on a King James Bible, is that wrong? I use the King James. That's what I'm using, the King James. That's all I've ever used my whole life. Okay. Come visit with us, Russell. We, we need to see each other again. Because I see everybody else has got... When you, you see pastors on TV, they got different things at the end of each verse. Yeah. And I don't know what they mean. Okay. Well, we need to sit down and look at that. I, I can help you out. Can I get you to get me about, have you ever seen the Bibles like that um, Caleb has where you can just turn to it and it shows you what part it is? You know, it's already got it marked. Oh, uh, like little tabs on it? Yeah, they got, you know, you look at it and it'll tell you uh, King this and um, John this. Yeah. How can I buy me one of them, that, sir? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, let's get together and I can help you. How about that? Um, do, do I have your phone number? Uh, you, I think you got it, don't you, sir? It's 336-706-5244. Uh, it's the same number I did have, sir. I ain't never changed it. 5244? Yes, sir. Okay. Same one I've always had. Okay. You still over here on the boulevard? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what time do you start? Uh, we start at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. For Bible class, a, worship at the ten. Have like a second show. Uh, and then ten o'clock is as our worship. Ten o'clock is your worship. Yeah, on Sunday I morning. Go, I go to this other place, and 
you might not like it or anything, well, but it's good with kids and everything. And, and I got my grandson in there, and he actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, preached a little uh, part on Matthews. Okay. Four to feet and everything. Okay. Well, and Russell, we, listen, I, I'm, I really had to cut you off. I, I, I like visiting with you, but I'm trying to get on with my lesson. So I'm not trying to be rude to you, but I really, I'd like to catch up with you, you know, off the air. How about that? Call, if you call back after the show, I'll be glad to talk to you, okay? No, no, no problem, sir. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Now, so friends, when you're talking about individuals that are denying what the Bible says, they're going beyond the commands. They're going beyond the law. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that was sent to me by a young man just obeyed the gospel recently come out of the Lutheran church, and this is what one of the pastors, the Lutheran pastor, told him. He says that the pastor says, there is no law governing our worship, though we are bound by our Lutheran confessions, i.e. the Augsburg Confession, Article 24. No laws governing their worship, but we, we, we are bound to the Lutheran confession. Is that not going beyond what is written? Isn't that not going above and beyond the Word of God? God's Word is not good enough for them, but yet we want to go to the, the uh, Lutheran confession? Really? Now, friends, even Balaam knew in Numbers 24, 13, Balaam even told Balak, Balak's wanting him to curse the children of Israel, and, Balak, and Balaam says to Balak, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, will I speak? He said, I cannot go beyond the commandment. Yet these folks, they go beyond the commandment. They write their own books, their own laws, and say we're not bound to the Bible, but we're bound to the confessions. The catechisms, the creed books. Really? I mean, I know Balaam was greedy, but man, these folks go further than Balaam. Now, going beyond what is written, how do they do that? Well, it's they elevate their doctrines. They elevate their man-made doctrines. And so they're above the law. And it's because men are elevated above the law. The reason why the sinner's prayer and we don't need authority for... Uh, what we do in worship, the reason why that is, is above the law is because men are above the law. I mean, these men like Reverend Sharpton and Reverend Jackson and Reverend uh, Falwell and Reverend uh, Graham, they take names that belong to God. No wonder they're above the law. They're above God. Holy and Reverend is His name is what the psalmist said, Psalm 111 verse 9. And so they're, they're above the law. Now, friends, it's easy to see. It's easy to see how this would happen in denominations. Because men have created denominations. They've created their own creed books, their own catechisms, their own guidelines. It makes sense that they would be above the law. They started above the law. But you know what? The idea of being above the law, it's also in the Lord's church too. Men go beyond what is written by elevating men, thinking of men above that which is written. Let me give you an example. In our brotherhood today, <clears throat> and I know uh, this has been talked about on, on TV before, but we have individuals that are running with false teachers, and no one says anything to them because men are loved and appreciated more than the Bible. Here's an example. Just, just run down a few examples here. There's a man named Ralph Gilmore from Freed Hardman, and he runs with people from, from uh, Pepperdine. But no one says anything to him about it. Why? I guess they think of him above that which is written. There's another gentleman named Dan Winkler, very popular among the Church of Christ. And he can go anywhere and be with anybody. You know why? Because people think of him above that which is written. Stafford North, OCU, Oklahoma Christian University, he will use the a cappella vocal band. That is right, that the bebops, and they say, well, we're not using mechanical instruments music, but you wouldn't know it to listen to him. And no one says anything to him. Why? I guess he's above the law. He's above what's written. Memphis School of Preaching, my alma mater, where I attended school for two years, uh, they'll use men that have been with folks at Pepperdine and OCU and all over places. 
Why? I guess they think that these men are above the law. They are going beyond what is written. They think of them above, where the Bible clearly says that you should separate from these individuals. Guys like Dave Miller, Ralph Gilmore, Jeff Jenkins, Rick Brumbach, who was the, uh, I believe, the director of the Southwest School of Preaching, they've all been with F. Lagarde Smith. Men didn't even believe in, in, in hell. And our brethren don't say anything about it. Why? You know why? Because they're all above what is written. They are thought of more highly than the Word. Now, friends, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, These things, brethren, have I in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that, one, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. When you talk about these guys and you say they shouldn't be doing this, you know what you, you get a lot? is, well, I've known him a long time. Really? You think of him above that which is written? The, the Bible says, don't think of men above that which is written. And that's exactly what was going on in Corinth. In Corinth, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse uh, 10, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared to me by uh, you, brethren, unto me, uh, unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contention among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? The problem was they were elevating men above that which is written, saying, this man is more important and I'm following him. This man is more important than the Bible. This man is more important than what God says. They are thinking of these men above that which is written. But here's what is written when it comes to individuals who are engaging, participating in false doctrine. Ephesians 5 and verse 11 in Ephesians 5 and verse 11. Have no fellowship, that's joint participation with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. But if they're participating and there's no reproving going on, guess what? There's only one conclusion left to come to. And that is that these men are above the law. Friends, no one is above the law. No one is above what God says. No one gets a pass. And if you think of some man or some doctrine, some creed, more than you think of what God says, you know what you're doing? You're going beyond that which is written. You're elevating people to a place that God never said to put them. You're elevating them and making them higher than God wants them. Now think about this. Paul said, I transferred this in a figure. I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes. Paul could have said this is who, who we're talking about here, but he said, no, he said, I'll use myself as an example. Listen, if Paul and Apollos or Peter, if they couldn't be elevated and followed above that which is written, they're inspired men. What makes you and I think today that simple men, uninspired, that they should be elevated above what, what is written? Friend, the Bible is right. The Bible is right. And every man's going to be accountable to this book in the day of judgment. Everybody's going to stand and be judged by this book. And so the conclusion that we have to come to is nobody's above the law because everybody's going to knee is going to bow. And everybody's going to be judged by this book. John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejects me and receives not my word hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Friends, you may think you're above the law today. Being in a church that, that God didn't talk about, disobeying God, you may think you're above it all, but you know what? One day, this, this book is going to judge you. Friends, I'm out of time. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate you listening. Appreciate the phone calls. And if I can assist you in any way, I will. Who you are, no matter what you believe, 
if it's not lining up with the word of God, then you are walking above the law. Why not submit to the will of God today? If we can assist you, you can reach me at 276-340-2653. Till next time, friends, thanks for watching. Make sure you're always getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.